Hello, my stars. Hope everybody is doing well and everybody is coping up with the everyday five questions for our certification. So uh, the plan is if we like the plan is like uh, to uh, finish 10 days and take a test on the 50 questions as in the test mode. The meaning is like you go through the 50 questions in 50 minutes and check your performance out of 50, how many you get right. Uh, if you get like 10 right, 20 right or 50 right, like it's up to you, we don't know. But if we do that, uh, what happens? Like it validates uh, your preparation. So if any changes to be made in the way you're preparing, you can always have one-on-one -on -one with me. And I can suggest you, if your score is not above 60%, there is something which is missing, which I would like to like talk with you and give you some suggestion which can improve your score in the next 50. So, and if you're scoring well, if you're coping up and your score is above 60%, you are absolutely doing fine. Just keep doing what you're doing. Looks like that is working for you. And uh, we will go from there. So uh, today I want to discuss uh, the next five questions. Again, uh, because we are doing this as a team, so your support for the team is needed and the participation is needed uh, and the stars are needed. Those stars are very, very valuable. The team can, uh, as a team, you can push each of you further or uh, you can pull the team back. If anybody in your team is very excited, working more hard, but because the other team members are not working, uh, you, the team is falling back. Okay, so it is almost like the race where you pass those, uh, like, you know, the relay race. So uh, because of one person, like, you might lose the race. So just don't do that. Uh, be considerate. Be uh, Just be on top of your game. Don't forget you have committed to complete five questions every day. We are not asking more than you. Only five questions. You do it on the weekday or you catch up on weekend. That's it. That's about it. Any uh, problems you face, any challenges you face, you always have me. You just have to give me a call and we work it out. Okay, so with that, uh, let me share my screen so that uh, we can go with the next five questions. Give me a second. Let me share. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to close this. And yes, I'm sharing the screen. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so for today's five, uh, again, just to remind ourselves, we are preparing for Oracle Database Certified SQL Associate Credential. So this is our Certified Associate Oracle Database SQL badge and like which we can use it on a resume, which you can use it or give it to your employer, like add in your personal profile information. And of course, it's going to give you a lot of confidence to talk about databases, talk about SQL. Again, uh, as I tell always, you might not be using 60% of the knowledge which you are learning in the exam on your real-time job. But it is just because it has a credential, it has a value, and it is something, a challenge, which you were thinking from long time uh, to complete. And now this is here, the opportunity to finish it in a limited time. So let's just go ahead and get it done, okay? Uh, so in this, these five questions, uh, we are mostly talking about DDL, data definition language, and a few questions are related to table. So whenever we are thinking about DDL, data definition language so and especially when we talk about table so table is one of the oracle database object which has a lot of variations okay when i say a lot of variations means there is create table so whenever we are creating the table it's just not creating the table the column name the data type of the column name and it is followed by constraint so whenever we are talking about table creation, we need to think of column level constraint and the constraint can be defined at the table level also at the bottom. And the different constraint types are primary key is there, foreign key is there, uh, not null is there, any column you want to make it compulsory. 
then you put it not null so that we cannot insert null over there. You can give a default value also. There is a constraint called unique and primary key and unique key. The difference is uh, the primary key is unique and not null. The unique key can be null, but it is uh, it cannot be duplicate. So that one difference you need to uh, remember as a rule or as a concept, you should know that. Again, uh, when we give the constraint to, uh, when we define the constraint means limitation for the validation of the data to keep the data integrity, like, you know, the data should, wrong data should not go in. So when we do that, uh, so that time you can define a custom constraint name, like our names, like we have our own names, like that we can give our own name to the constraint or Oracle gives a constraint name by sys, S-Y-S underscore, like the exa, exa number. So it gives its own constraint name. So that constraint name can be identified. The good practices give your own name, but if you don't give, Oracle still has to give because Oracle's data dictionary has to keep the constraint name because there are alter statements. They work on constraint. You can enable a constraint. You can disable a constraint. You can drop a constraint. You can alter a constraint. All those operations can be done. So the second statement alter, there is a lot of variations of alter, almost 10 variations of alter just with the table. The other Oracle objects in your syllabus in the scope of this exam are views, sequences, synonyms, indexes, so these are the other Oracle objects which you have. And with them, there are a little bit limitation of uh, using this uh, create altered uh, statement. Drop is valid for everything because drop is nothing but you just getting rid of that particular object. So if I create a table, I no more need it, I drop it. I create a view, I don't need it. View is just a query, I don't need it, I can drop it. A sequence, if you don't need it, you drop it. If a synonym is there, index is there. With index, uh, more well, uh, variations are there because index and table, they go together. But you can describe a table and see a table with the data types and all, but you cannot describe a index. So that also you might want to just remember when we talk about these tables, other Oracle objects, constraints. And whenever we go to table, of course, we have the data types. And the famous data types which we work with is var char 2 which is variable character so character is fixed character and i have given this example before my name suppose geeta and if the data type is var char 2 10 then geeta is g e e t a five characters so only five characters five bytes will be needed but suppose i have char 10 and i put geeta then geeta with five and another five spaces will be there. So again, if you are working with any comparison and all, then you need to use the functions trim and all to trim those spaces from the uh, towards the end and all that stuff you need to do. Uh, but right now, that is one of the data type number is the one which we have used like a decimal numbers. If you do comma two, like you can specify decimal. Uh, you have date data type DD, MON, RR. That is the format like uh, we have and uh, then you have uh, uh, so these are the three like which we are using very often like uh, these three data types club blob long so many more are there but uh, right now we are focusing only these two three data types which we use in the create table so that is another information just to remember and uh, uh, from there, we just go here. So the first question which we are discussing here is which two statements are true about Oracle database. So a varchar to column without the data is has a null value. Yes. So varchar to, if you don't want to pass anything, don't give like a single quote and a space or something because space will be saved. But if you don't give anything, it's actually null. Null means what not known now means what later I can go and use an update statement to put the data into that column. So this looks right. Uh, the table can have multiple primary keys. Always remember the table can have a composite key, which is more than one column as a primary key, but primary key keyword cannot be used two times. So you cannot say uh, employee number primary key, e name primary key, no. 
if you want both of them to be primary key, you define it at the table level as a composite key. Okay, but over here, it's clearly asking multiple primary key. No, you cannot have multiple primary key. But can you have multiple foreign key? Yes. Can you have multiple unique key? Yes. Can you have multiple not null? Yes. Everything else is yes, 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 except the primary key. Primary key cannot be uh, more than one primary key. The column definition uh, can specify multiple data types. A column definition. No, at a one time, only one data type. How come a data can be two types? You know, you can alter it and get it changed to something else. And uh, that way you can do it. But at a time, only one data type. A table. So this is completely wrong. A table can have multiple foreign keys. Yes, it can have. Uh, you have seen the example in employees itself. It has a foreign key to reference to department. And also it has a foreign key to reference to itself, the manager column. A number column uh, without the data has zero value. No, like zero is a data. Zero and space, both of them is the data. Okay, so uh, zero is by default, it cannot be zero, but you can use a default keyword uh, on the uh, column level and give the data zero if you want to. So uh, absolutely with going with rejection also, and clearly it is asking two answers. So our A and D, they are most correct answers, okay? The next one is we have a create table, table name, insert into this, this, this. So like we have created a table completed with the semicolon. We have a var chart to column, and then we are inserting data commit, which is true about modifying the column in the alter test. So this is more on the altering the table. So the for this, you need to actually go with the rejection, but try to understand what is the data type and what is the data we are passing. So the column one, the data type is varchar two, 10, and column two, the data is uh, number 10. And the data we are passing to the first column is one, two, three in quotes and one, two, three without quotes because it's a numerical that is inserting the data. So this is a good statement. If you exactly type this and do this, it is going to work. Now, what is uh, asked, uh, C1 can be changed to number 10, okay. And C2 can be changed to, see, first of all, the first, first insert, first data, which is going, it's in quotes, means what? It has to be varchar two, okay. And the second one has to be number. So without even reading the complete thing, you know what is what data is going in here. C1 can be changed to number. No, it cannot be because the data going in there is the varchar two. C2 can be changed to number uh, five from 10 to five, it's okay. But C1 cannot be changed to varchar two, which is wrong. C C1 is already uh, uh, varchar two. So why did they're saying that C1 can be changed to number? But C2 cannot be changed to virtual. So C1 can be changed to number. No, uh, it is like, again, C1, if you change to number, it is again, um, it's the same thing like A. So it can, it is not possible. Uh, now C1 can be changed to virtual to five, means from 10 to five, but this is three character width. So five is okay. C2 can be changed to 12 to, which is again possible because 12 integer, two decimal possible. So D is the only one so far okay. C2 can be changed to Vacha2, C2 to Vacha2, but C1 can, uh, cannot be changed to number. Again, the data is going numerical, it is not possible. So just remember for this type of tricky question, don't go with uh, reading, uh, like uh, don't get confused. Just look at the original data type, look at the data which is going, okay? Now they're saying they want to put this data, but now they're changing this. So first column whatsoever, it has to be at least minimum varchar to three because there are three bytes going here. And the second one has to be minimum, like this is nine, nine, nine. So like it is like a one, two, three. So it has to be at least the, like it is uh, 10. So it can be three also, like, you know, so number three also it can work because the maximum number would be nine, nine, nine then. So that is the only changes which you can do here if you really want to insert this data. So because of that, we are choosing the answer number D. The next one is which to true about the queries using union, union all intersect minus. This is the one which we have done previously. Just a brush up like uh, over here, something new your understanding is for update clause cannot be specified. That is something new. If you're making the notes, add that uh, in your notes or tips that this cannot be specified, which is true. 
because we are selecting like which is true in two statements. So uh, none of the set operator can be uh, used when selecting club. So no, this is like not true. So this uh, there must be equal number of columns in each select list, which we had no, this we have done it before. We, we knew this before, so that is fine. The name of each column in the first select list must match. No, the name should not be matching. Not even, I'm not even reading the complete st statement. Each select statement in the query have can have order by again. No, I don't even, uh, when I see this, okay, I reject it right away. So I selected these two, okay. The next one is about like you have a, a table description. You're executing the query, uh, query department number as this, sum of salary, employee one. This, why we are giving it's giving the error because you cannot do group by by a by the column position. You cannot do group by by column position. You cannot do group by by alias. Uh, you can do order by column position and order by alias, but not the group by. So I'm, I'll not use, uh, read the whole query. I may not want to use all the options also because group by right here is looking bad. And that's the rule which we know. So I already rejected all the answers. This query output is going to be an error, okay? So that's the way I would go ahead and choose this. The next one is again on our uh, union intersect minus understanding of that. Don't get confused. It's some table given with the data. This is the second table. Like there is an invoices table and there is a currencies table. Now read the question carefully. The which query returns the uh, currencies in uh, currencies uh, uh, currencies in currencies that are not present in invoices. So you want to get distinct values in currencies table. So you don't need to worry. Just uh, do currencies minus invoices. That's it. Nothing else you don't, you need to read also. You know, this is the best way to, the uh, easiest way to do it. Why you want to go this way? Why you intersect is anyway not possible because it's not common between those you're asking. And uh, because over here, the currencies uh, minus invoices over here also currencies minus invoices is there but there is some kind of a syntax mistake because the number of columns in the currencies is one number of columns there should be a star here but if there was a star here still it wouldn't work because the number of column with the star are not matching so syntax wise correct like a minus is the answer but b and d could be the choices but in d there is a syntax mistake because of the number of column in star uh, so because of that, the answer we are choosing is B, okay? So this is, uh, these are the uh, five questions for today. And I hope you enjoyed this five questions. Some kind of revision was there. We tried to learn a little bit more, which is coming, which will come in the future five questions, which is more about the table, uh, creating table, data types, uh, constraints, alter table variations or drop or other Oracle objects like view, sequence, synonyms, uh, and indexes. So these are the topic, very interesting topic, very short topic. Uh, for sure, we get some questions because they are in our exam objective. So just uh, when you're reading the book, look at those uh, pages and try to make your own highlight so that it's easy to just revise. With that, we are ending this session and see you guys again. Thank you.